Hey, in this video we're going to talk about how to do accuracy assessment on a classified map. So you had a land, so you had a satellite image, you went to a lot of trouble to classify it, now you've got uh, pixels that might represent a burned forest or an unburned forest or water. You've got these map classes, right? You've created a map with information and now you want to know how accurate is that map? How well did you do? So there's really three steps to accuracy assessment. One is to identify ground truth pixels, or GTPs. These are places where you're going to pick a random point on your map and then check and see if it is correctly classified. And both ArcMap and QGIS have options to generate these points. Uh, so once you've generated your, your GTPs, you're going to visit the locations in the field and actually see if it's correct or less excitingly, you might just compare it to independent data, perhaps to high resolution imagery in a few places where you have high res imagery available. And then the final thing is to compute accuracy statistics once you know which pixels are correct and which are wrong. So there's three basic options to pick the ground truth points. One is just to random, randomly pick them. And if you randomly pick them across the entire map, you tend to end up with uh, you know, more ground truth points in your larger classes, right? Uh, another choice is stratified random. Which makes sure that you, that you generate them in proportion to the area of each class. So your bigger classes would have more ground truth points. And then finally, my favorite, equalized stratified random, where you're going to generate them uh, and make sure each class has the same number of points. That's what we'll do in our lab. So then, once you have done the ground truthing, right, you've determined which ground truth points are correct and which are false, incorrect, we make what's called a confusion matrix. And boy, is it confusing. But I'll try to walk you through it here. Basically, it's a, a table or a matrix. On the, the y-axis here, we have classified map pixels, okay? So for example, water, sand, forest, urban, corn, and hay, right? So these are how they appear on the map. And we have these same classes as we know they are on the ground. Water, soil, forest, urban, corn, and hay, right? So if a pixel of forest that you know was forest on the ground was also categorized as forest on the map, then it goes right in here, okay? So you can see that in this example, most pixels were classified successfully, right? As you come down, you see the biggest numbers in this, where they meet. But this also gives us lots of other information. For example, um, we could ask, okay, which, which class on the ground, which type of ground pixel was most often uh, misclassified, that should say misclassified. Um, and that's going to be urban, right? You look at urban, of the 248 total pixels that were on the ground, uh, only 126 were correctly classified. Likewise, you can ask, okay, uh, of the pixels on the map, which, which user type on the map is most often wrong on the map? And that's going to be hey, come across here, we see of 481 total uh, hay pixels on the map, only 359 are correct, and a bunch are wrong. Okay, so you can look at this through the lens of, you know, how accurately did you represent the ground pixels, or how likely are things are pixel on the map to be wrong. And I'll just repeat myself here. Um, this leads to two types of accuracy. So, producer's accuracy is thinking about it in terms of the producer of the map. How well did I do? For a, a known type of ground class, right, how often does that come out correct on the map, right? That's the producer's accuracy. The user's accuracy is imagine you're just the guy with the map and you don't know anything about what's on the ground. For a given class on the map, how likely is a pixel in that class to be correct? Right? These are very tricky, so you've got to give these some thought. But of course, we can compute both of them from our confusion matrix. So let's start with the producer's accuracy. Right? 
Here we're going to look down the columns, okay? And oh, let's take sand for an example. As so we come down for sand, um, of the, the 68 pixels that we know were on the ground, right, 52 of them were correctly categorized. So our producer's accuracy is 76%. And you can see for water, it was 100%. That's pretty good. All right. <clears throat> so now let's uh, look at the user's accuracy, right? Let's stay with sand. So for, for pixels on the map, right, you're just the guy with the map. You want to know where is the sand. And you look at it, and you see there's 72 pixels on the map. They're labeled as sand and 52 of them are correct. So in this case, the uh, user's accuracy for sand is 72%. And I guess coincidentally, the users and producers are the, the same <laughs> for sand, but they're not always the same. And then finally, you can look at the overall accuracy. So essentially here, we have um, how many assignments were correct out of the total pixels. So here we're going to look down the diagonals, add up all the correctly binned pixels. So 480 for water, 52 for sand, 313 for forest, and so on. We'll sum all those up here, divide them by the total number of pixels, 1992. The overall accuracy is 84%. Not bad. Think you can beat that on your map? We'll find out.